by definition, we must move to renewable energy. I think people sometimes, you know, I mean, how can one argue against that? Because to argue for it is to say that we will eventually run out of energy and die. I mean, and or, or civilization will collapse. I mean, first of all, it's important to appreciate that the Earth is almost entirely solar powered today. Um, in the sense that the sun is the only thing that keeps us from um, being at roughly the temperature of cosmic background radiation, which is three degrees above absolute zero. If it wasn't for a sun, we'd be a frozen dark uh, ice ball. Um, and the, uh, the amount of energy, so the amount of energy that hits the sun, that reaches us from the sun is tremendous. It's, it's over, it's the, it's, 99% plus of all energy that, that Earth has. Um, then there's, 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 there's this energy we need to use to run civilization, which to us is big, but compared to the amount of energy that reaches us from the sun is tiny. Um, so it, it, it's very easy, for, like it actually doesn't take much. If, if, you, if you wanted to power the entire United States with solar panels, um, it would take um, a put, a fairly small corner of Nevada, Texas, Utah, anywhere. Uh, look, you, it's, it's, you only need about 100 miles by 100 miles of solar panels to power the entire United States. Um, and then the, the batteries you need to store that energy to make sure you have 24 seven um, uh, power is one mile by one mile. One, one square mile, <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. You know, it's worth noting, I'm not sure if people are aware of this, but it, it, the world could be powered many times over by solar if you had enough uh, battery capacity to pair it with it. M many times, like a thousand. <laughs> it's literally true. The, the amount of energy that, that reaches the earth from the sun is staggeringly high. We have this enormous fusion generator in the sky uh, that, that is lobbing out vast amounts of energy. And I'm, I'm talking about just using land area. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. In fact, here's a little tidbit. Um, if you take a nuclear plant and you took its current output and compared that to just taking solar panels and putting solar panels on the, la on the area used by the nuclear power plant, because these typically have a big keep out zone, you know, about maybe five kilometers or there, thereabouts, it, we're, we're building houses, you know, and, and dense, uh, you know, any kind of dense office or, or housing space. Usually people don't want to do that near a nu nuclear power plant. <laughs> um, uh, so th there's, there's quite a big keep out zone. And when you factor the keep out zone into, into account, um, the solar panels put on that area will typically generate more power than the nuclear power plant. Um, so I mean, if you, if you wanted, I mean, you, you, you could, but like you could power the entire United States um, uh, with about, let's say, 150 to 200 square kilometers of solar panels. The entire United States. Take a corner of Utah. What, what does need to happen is to, if we can, accelerate the transition towards renewables. That's the sensible thing to do. Um, and, um, you know, if you take, a, say, a, I mean, use maybe two examples, uh, Saudi Arabia, since the Saudi Aramco uh, president spoke here. The, uh, Saudi Arabia has an enormous amount of sunlight, and that, that, that will be there for billions of years, or well, at least one billion years until the sun eventually engulfs us, but a billion years, solid. So it, it seems that, um, you know, in investing in the, the, the solar resource is the thing that, that's really going to preserve the, the long-term future, not, not so much the oil and gas. I mean, that's, that's a temporary thing. In, in the future, we'll look back, and by future, I'm not talking about super far in the future, I'm talking about towards the end of the century. We will look back on gasoline-powered cars the same way look, we look back on coal, as sort of a quaint anachronism that's in a museum. Now, a lot of people would say, well, well solar can that really provide the energy that we need? But a lot of people don't perhaps appreciate that solar energy is already uh, the source of the vast majority of Earth's energy. Um, w without solar power, we would be uh, a frozen uh, ice ball uh, at about three or four degrees above absolute zero. So really all we're talking about uh, for solar electricity is, t is taking the tiny, tiny bit of energy that humanity needs for electricity 
which, which, which is, I emphasize is super tiny compared to the amount of solar energy that hits the earth. You could generate all the electricity that the United States needs with about um, a 100 mile by 100 mile grid of, of solar power. So you could just take like a corner of Arizona <laughs> and that would be all the energy that the United States needs. This, this is extremely important fundamental. In, in a way you can think of Earth like, like Earth is like a giant satellite. And the way that satellites are, are powered, including the, the, the big geostationary satellites, um, which we're quite familiar, we just launched one actually um, at SpaceX. Um, th those will last for 20 years with no maintenance in orbit. Um, literally no, no, one, no, no one can go to them, so they're designed to zero maintenance. And they're entirely powered by solar and battery. But there's no, there's no fundamental scaling limit. Um, so just as you can power a big satellite purely with solar and a battery, uh, you can power Earth purely with solar and a battery. Earth is a giant satellite. Because the, the, the writing's on the wall um, for the long-term future of coal, uh, which is that it doesn't, coal, coal does not have a long-term future. And so when, um, when one looks at either the establishment of a new coal power plant or doing a, a, a major upgrade of a, an existing coal, coal power plant, when going to investors to get financing for that, investors know that coal does not have long-term future. So the cost, the capital cost is incredibly high because they, they want to charge a very high interest rate because they're not expecting it to last 30 years, which is normally the, the length of time that they would want to amortize the value of a power plant. So effectively coal becomes very expensive because people aren't willing to invest in something that doesn't have a great future. I think the important thing to bear in mind with, with batteries is there really is no material shortage. The Earth crust has essentially an infinite amount of metal as far as humanity is concerned. We have barely scratched the surface of the, the, um, resource, of, of the metal resource availability of the Earth's crust. Um, and and th this is a very fundamentally different thing from mining, mining coal or oil or, or, or you know, because um, metal is recycled. Um, so once you have enough metal to support a given size of industry, then it just keeps it just keeps going in a, in a recycling process. I mean, there may be a small amount that exits the rec recycling process, but it's quite a small amount. The, the useful of life of the battery, depending on how long, what energy level is um, considered to be the end of life of the battery, is, is sort of on the order of 15 years. But it, it does depend on how heavily the battery is used, what percentage of, of the how deeply it's discharged, how how aggressive power is is added to the pack or removed from the pack. But the electronics can last you know, to 20 to 30 years. But typically the, 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 the cells have about 10% of their value even when they have no energy capability left. So obviously we must find ways to produce energy in a renewable manner. Um, the, the question is just how hard we should try, what pace we should go at it. And I, I think logically we should go as fast as we can um, because uh, since we know we have to get there eventually, um, it, it's better to, to get to a renewable future, a sustainable future sooner rather than later, you know, get there before we do the environmental damage, not after. Um, and even if uh, one could say that, that, well, maybe there isn't that much environmental damage to play the devil's advocate, maybe, maybe the environmental damage, maybe it won't be that bad. Why take the chance? <laughs>